All right, welcome back. And this, we're going to go over the pacemaker action potential graph. The pacemaker cells have their own types of action potentials. The pacemaker cells are the ones that actually create the electrical activity in the heart. These would be the SA node, AV node, and Purkinje fibers. I went over this in the electrical pathway heart video. I will link it in the description if you would like to see it. Um, I think it's really helpful if you don't know what it is, watch that first. And this will make so much more sense. So it's really important you don't mix up the cardiac muscle action potential graph and the pacemaker action potential graph. They're two different things. So what we're looking at here is the action potential fired from that pacemaker, that SA node, that AV node, or Purkinje fibers. So let's take a look here. The first thing we're going to look at is the very beginning here. And notice it says LF open. What does that mean? Here's a joke. Not really, but there is something called funny channels. I'm not even joking. They're called funny channels in biology. And it's a mixed sodium and potassium channel. This is not the sodium potassium pump. This is a different thing. It's a mixed sodium and potassium channel because all the ions are going in one direction. So why is it actually called funny channels? It's like a little FYI kind of deal. So it was funny because these two researchers named DeFrancesco and Nobel identified these funny channels. And what they noticed that the sodium current, the inward sodium current is actually activated by hyperpolarization. So when the membrane potential is actually underneath resting membrane potential, the sodium, there's, an, there's basically an inward sodium current. And this is responsible because of the funny channels. The funny channels are the ones that does this. So that's why it's called funny channels. So what's happening here is the funny channels open. So in other words, what's happening in the cell? Well, Notice that we're going up in potential. We're going from negative 60 to negative 30. So we're going up. So ions must be going inside the cell. So since it's a funny channel, sodium and potassium go into cell. Sweet. Now, right before threshold, T-type calcium channels open. So in the last video, I told you there's many different types of channels in our body. Yes, there are sodium, potassium, calcium, but there are even subdivisions of those. There's many types of calcium channels. There's many types of potassium channels. In the last video, we went over potassium TO and potassium DR channels. So in this video, we actually, well, for the pacemaker action potential, we have T-type calcium channels. So they open. And notice that we're going up in voltage. So that must mean calcium is going inside the cell because calcium has a positive 2 charge. In other words, since it's positive 2 charge and stuff goes inside the cell, the cell will get more positive. So let's write that down. Calcium goes inside the cell. So then we, we reach threshold. And when immediately when we hit the threshold, we fire an action potential. But also something else happens. L-type calcium channels open. This is the exact same L-type as the muscle cell video. The muscle, the cardiac muscle cell action potential. We also had L-type calcium channels there. Same thing here. So the L-type cal calcium channels open. And in addition, calcium is going to also rush into the cell from the L-type channels. Sweet. Now, when it reaches peak here, it's around zero. Potassium channels are going to open up. 
they're just regular potassium channels. Not, it's not potassium TO or DR, just regular old potassium channels that we're used to. They're going to open. And since potassium is positively charged, and the, if you can see from the graph, we're going down in voltage. Now we're from zero to like going way down. That must mean that potassium is leaving the cell. That's where we're going to draw. All right. Now, when we reach hyperpolarization levels down here, the funny channels will open up again. So the funny channels close around here. So everything starts closing here. So that means the funny channels, the L-type calcium channels, and the T-type calcium channels, all these are starting to close around here because we see a downwards hill, essentially. And the only thing that's open there is the potassium channels all the way until here. So then the funny channels open up again. And then we're going to basically repeat this process over again. So that's how we keep firing action potentials, uh, action potentials in our heart. So the SA node fires from 60 to 100 beats per minute. So this thing is happening 60 to 100 times a minute. So if our heart rate was 40 beats per minute, this would be happening 40 times a minute. So it's also important to know that we have a really interesting refractory period. So this is the refractory period here. Imagine if it was shorter, what would happen? Well, your heart rate would race. Imagine if it went to 200 beats per minute or 300 beats per minute. So it's not a good idea to have a really high refractory period. Now, if it was really long refractory period, the SA node won't fire as much. You would have a really low heart rate. Now, just think about this for a second. Is this really a bad thing? Well, not necessarily, because believe it or not, you can actually slow the, the rate of your heart. So this is actually a really true story that people usually in um, like India or, or like the Middle Eastern countries and Asia, like monks, all they do is meditate and they're really, really relaxed. And what they did is they trained their heart and their lungs by meditating to work basically slower. So the heart rate is slower and their breathing is slower. But you're probably thinking, wait a second, that, wouldn't that like affect like less oxygen getting to the brain and whatnot? Well, not necessarily. The really cool thing is that these people who meditate really, really often and a lot, like multiple, multiple, multiple times a day, like oh, that's all they do and they focus, they actually developed really strong heart muscles. So yes, even your heart rate is slowed down, each contraction is way more forceful than any other normal human being out there. So like me, I, I don't do yoga that often. But if we're going to compare me to like them, they probably have a much, much stronger heart. The muscles themselves are really hard. They can, they can forcefully contract so much more powerful, so much more force to get the blood up around the body and that and it's compensated by a slower heart rate so it's not necessarily bad a lot of people that are into fitness <coughs> sorry about that fitness have a low heart rate so bikers for example they have a low heart rate so it's not necessarily bad but it could be bad to really have you know a fast heart rate because you're not getting enough blood in the body if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Until next time, later.